Hi, it's Kernatex here with a series of videos about building and installing Gen 2 Linux. The reason why I'm doing this set of videos when I've already done a set is, well, several reasons really. The videos I did previously are a little bit out of date and some things have changed in the Gen 2 handbook such that um, things that are referenced in the videos that I've done previously um, are now wrong because the handbook's been updated. Um, also, some I've had some requests for doing updates as well. Um, and there's another quite big reason why I've decided to do this, and that's because of the number of distributions that are dropping 32-bit support for Linux. Um, now, for most people, this is probably not a problem because you know every every machine, or just about every machine, every PC that's um, available these days uh, supports 64-bit AMD 64-bit. But there may still be some people have machines that are 32-bit, um, or even second machines that they think oh. It would be nice to put that to some use, where you could put it to use as a server, for example. And Linux is such a good operating system for putting old hardware to to new uses, um, when you may think of skipping it if it was a Windows machine. Um, Linux can give an old machine a new lease of life. Now, with 30-bit 2-bit there are a few issues I have to be aware, aware of. Generally, unless it's some server machine, some big server machine, generally there's a limit on uh, the amount of RAM that the 32-bit machine will have. Um, there's by default a 4 gigabyte limit but that can be reduced somewhat due to um, hardware address space being used. So generally the maximum amount of RAM that a 32-bit machine can access is between three and say three and a half gig, depending on the hardware and depending on the manufacturer and so on. Um, there's ways around that. I'll be pointing out a few of those things when we um, go through the kernel. Another thing is that obviously true 32-bit machines, which is what I'm going to be building on, um, will have due to their age will have some performance issues. They're not going to be blindingly fast like the latest 64-bit machines. Um, so to that end, I've chosen a machine which is actually an SMP machine. It's a server board. It's a true 32-bit. It's true multiprocessor. It's not hyper-threading or anything, any fancy stuff like that. So it gives you an idea of the age of it. It's, a, it's roughly from around 2002, 2003. So it's just before Intel... I think it's about a year or two just before Intel started releasing hyper-threaded uh, Pentium 4 processors and certainly a few years before the first multi-core processors were released. So it does mean that I, I'm able to compile the packages at that little bit faster because I've got two real cores to compile from. But that's something to bear in mind if you've... Um, if you are compiling on 32-bit, it will be quite slow. There are memory constraints, and there are also hardware constraints. So the processors are slow, the memory is slow. Um, you know, everything in the whole system, even the disks, might be slow. I have got um, a modern, well, it's a relatively modern uh, SATA drive in there, but it's only a SATA one drive. So again, it's not the fastest thing. Um, it's attached to a PCI card, so it's off an expansion slot. Although it is a PCI-X, so I believe it's 64-bit, and I think it might be 66 megahertz. So again, it's not a slouch by the standards of the original motherboard, but it's not the fastest thing uh, by today's standards. Um, so as I say, 32-bit, it's losing popularity for probably good reasons really you know 64-bit rules of roost these days we've got multi-core processors um, gigabytes and gigabytes of memory um, 
So, so this this would be a good way to put some old hardware to good use. It might be just be a gaming machine you might want to put together, you know, just to play, for example, Steam still. The Steam uh, program still runs in 32-bit, with 32-bit libraries. Um, I won't be showing how to install Steam, but it is possible. There are hints, and uh, I think there's a wiki page on how to install Steam on, on Gen 2. Uh, but I say I won't be showing that. I've never tried it myself. Um, but it is possible. So the first thing to do, I guess, is to um, maybe just start with the Gen 2 website. I'd maybe just quickly mention a little bit about the hardware, a little bit more about the hardware I'm using. It's um, an AMD um, 2400 Plus uh, Athlon MP chip. Um, there's obviously two of them, so they're they're running at two gigahertz, twenty four hundred plus is the designation. If you remember, or that, if you remember that far back, AMD were using performance rating, so it's a PR performance rating of twenty four hundred. Um, so there's two of those. There's two gigabytes of memory. I think it's, if I remember rightly, it's four um, DIMMs. I think it was. I think it was DDR2 at that time. Um, it's also ECC memory um, because it's a server board. So that that does mean that if if I reboot the machine, there is a pause of about a minute where you get a blank screen because the registers in the the ECC RAM are being reset. Um, they have to be reset, obviously, to identify any any errors in the RAM. So if they weren't cleared, these registers then obviously errors would be spewed out everywhere so if I do reboot and you see a blank screen I'll try and talk over it but it is just the the board doing that clearing of the RAM um, what else has it got I've got an NVIDIA I think it's a 7800 GT I think it's GT 7800 we'll see it when we look at the hardware listing in the operating system um, but it's one of the golden samples that Gainwood did, one of the last AGP um, video cards before everybody went to PCI Express. Because um, I, I do use this machine for um, sort of retro gaming, I suppose you could call it occasionally. So, although having said that, it's um, a bit of a laugh because the card is uh, eight times AGP, as I recall. But the unfortunately, the AGP slot in the server board is only four times, so I'm not getting the maximum out of it. But that's by the by. So yeah, so it's basically t twin um, AMD Athlon MP for multiprocessor, performance rating 2400. So they're two gigahertz processors. I think they come up with BOGO MIPS of 4000, which is quite impressive on the face of it but when when it's compiling and you can see that it's a little bit slower than modern machines um, two gigabytes of RAM in four slots um, and yeah I've got a SATA drive a 500 gigabyte I think it's a Samsung SATA drive so it's it's not um, unreasonable spec for its time but it's like I say it won't win any speed awards compared to modern machines um, one other thing to mention is that the AMD Athlon didn't have SSE2 instructions, whereas the Pentium 4 chips did have SSE2. Um, and I found when I've been setting up the PC for playing games with Windows XP that I couldn't install Firefox um, or the latest version of 32-bit Firefox because it's lacking the SSE2 support. It has got SSE and it's obviously got 3D now and is it 3D now enhanced? Um, but I had to go to a really old version of Firefox um, to to get that on there. Um, it's not to access the internet; it's just to access the local web server. Um, obviously, aware of issues with lack of support for XP and older versions of web browsers and so on. But that's not a problem because we're compiling stuff, or it shouldn't be a problem, I'll say, because uh, we're compiling stuff from scratch, um, that issue shouldn't be a problem, but obviously anything that used or uses SSE2 
or anything, any of those newer enhanced instructions um, are going to be that much slower. So it's not the sort of project you want to use for, for example, transcoding or maybe even playing. Well, yeah, I certainly wouldn't expect to play high definition videos on a machine such as this. Um, just wouldn't be worth it. Um, now, I had thought of using or, or doing this demonstration on, on a Intel Atom CPU, which um, I've got a couple of machines. I've got, I have got a 32-bit one. I have got a 64-bit one. And they are twin core, I think, or are they hyper-threaded? I can't remember if they're hyper-threaded or twin core. Um, and But they have got all these, or a lot of these new um, SSE uh, instructions on the chip. But there are various issues around them. Yes, you'd be getting the multimedia extensions um, enhanced, but I believe I remember reading somewhere that the Atoms haven't got the... Um, out, is it out of order execution, I think? There's, there's some aspect about them that unless the stuff's compiled very carefully, they don't perform that well. Um, and I didn't... On my tests, I didn't find that they were much faster than the um, twin Athlon that I'm going to be compiling on. If anything, they might have been a little bit slower. So that's why I've gone with this older hardware. So on the face of it, it's a lot older. It's a little bit slower, but um, it, it should be should be fast enough to, to give this demonstration. And like I say, when... You come if you come to use this for yourself for 32 bit, um, you you probably have to expect it maybe to be a little bit slower unless you've got maybe a I can't remember there were Pentiums around that um, 32 bit Pentiums that weren't the hyper threaded but even with the hyper threading um, you should get a little bit of a extra performance boost anyway um, it's obviously not double. Um, as, as you'd expect it to be. All these things are so, so such a long time ago and less important than today's specifications and so on. I tend to forget what's what. So anyway, let's make a start. Um, so the Gen 2 web page, by the way, before I carry on, um, if you're looking to build 64-bit and you've listened this far, the instructions between 32-bit and 64-bit are almost identical. I'll point out the main area where there's differences, if I remember. Uh, I will mention now one of the biggest differences is how you boot the machine. So with 64-bit, you probably want to be using UEFI. Um, so that, that part of it is slightly different. And also the partitioning, you, you probably want to be using GPT partitioning rather than the MS-DOS type. Uh, MBT partitioning. Um, I don't know if you can use GPT partitioning on a BIOS only machine, but I'm not going to take the chance. I'm just going to use the standard M MBT partitioning. Uh, sorry, not MBT, MBR partitioning, uh, master boot record partitioning. Um, but certainly if you're following this guide um, and building for a 64 bit machine, go for the UFI and go for the GPT partitioning. As you'll see, there are separate guides for various different architectures. There is a specific 64-bit guide and there is a specific 32-bit guide. If you are doing the 64-bit, just bear in mind to follow through the 64-bit version of the Gen 2 handbook um, and use my videos as guidance rather than uh, gospel, if you like. <laughs> 